Greetings ladies and gentlemen, I have finally decided to return to YouTube and make more tutorials. I have produced an entire C Sharp Intermediate series as well as recreated my C Sharp Beginner series in full HD with a better quality voiceover using the microphone you hear now. I'm releasing this first intermediate tutorial as a token of appreciation, but for me to release the others, I need your help. Most of my time is dedicated to my other channel, Game Binge. If you want me to upload tutorials here, go support Game Binge. Click here to visit my other channel, and if you subscribe, watch a few of our videos, and leave feedback, then I promise I will make the time to release more tutorials here. Thanks for the help, and enjoy the video. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my first C Sharp Intermediate Tutorial. In this first video, I'm going to quickly recap all of the core concepts we've learned so far, just as a refresher before we move on to new material. There are three major topics I want to quickly and efficiently summarize that all C Sharp learners should be well versed in before they continue. The first topic is variables and output, which can also be considered input and output, since variables are often the result of user input. Variables are any data values that are subject to change. They are often declared by the programmer or entered by the user, but should always be utilized by your program. Freestanding variables are just pointless. Creating variables is simple. Declare the type, name, and value. In this case, I chose to create an integer that represents my age. An integer is a whole number. In this case, 19. My next tutorial is going to be an in-depth look at data types and values for variables. These variables can be reused throughout your program and are probably the most important element of your coding structure. You need to make sure you're using the right data type for what you're trying to do, and also name your variables in an intuitive way that will not be easily forgotten. Output is the way we communicate with the user. This can be done with labels, message boxes, and even graphics. For the purpose of keeping these concept tutorials simple, we will use message boxes for most of our examples. I'll create one now. To create a message box, simply find the message box class, invoke its show method, and then pass that method a parameter. In this case, it must be a string. If you pass it anything else, it'll go haywire. So in this case, I'll just have it output my age. You can cast a non-string to a string, like so. If you were to just pass age to it and not, you know, cast it to the string, then you'd get a big error. So. Don't do that. If we run our program, we'll get a big message box saying, my age is 19, as we would expect. The second topic is conditional statements, logic. In a previous video, I made the mistake of implying that the only conditional statements were if-else statements. This is not true, and in one of the tutorials following this, I will talk about more of these. If-else statements are, of course, the most popular choice for checking values and putting logic-based decisions into your program. For example, I have this program that asks, what is 2 plus 2? You are then presented with a text box to input your answer. Obviously, the answer is 4, but does your program know that? No, it doesn't. Not yet. Double-click the button to enter its on-click event. Now we can create a simple if-else statement to check whether the message box does in fact line up with the question. We're just going to check if what the user entered is indeed 4. Now that text box has a name textbox1. I'm going to use textbox1 to identify it and then check its text variable, or property actually. <clears throat> Its text property is basically the input that the user has typed into it, as we've learned before. And we're going to check whether it is equal to 4. Now you may be wondering, why did I put 4 in quotations? That's because a text box can only take a string. So if I were to check against a integer, that wouldn't make any sense to C Sharp, and C Sharp would throw me a big error. So we've got to make sure it's a string that we're checking against. And if we do get it correct, I'm just going to make it say, you're correct. So we'll put in a message box. By the way, I've said this in the past, a simple way to create a message box is to type MB until this M box snippet comes up, and then press tab tab. And there you go. Now type in what you want to show in the message box, and that's going to be, you're correct. And of course, if they put in anything else, we want the message box to tell us we're wrong.
There you go. Now you may notice, since this is a text box, it can be fairly ambiguous. You can put in numbers or letters. So we're gonna go ahead and check against the textual representation of four as well. In order to do that, you simply use a operator, in this case, or, because we wanna check whether it's four or textual representation of four. Or is done like so. Now there are other operators such as and and other ones, but or is the one we want in this particular case. If we run our program and put in four, we're correct. If we put in anything else other than this four, such as this, you're wrong, or a number value of like three, you're also wrong because, well, you are. That is conditional statements. The third topic is object-oriented programming, the skeleton of how modern programming operates. To understand object-oriented programming, or OOP, you have to understand three basic principles, classes, instances, and methods. Let's use cars as an example. If car is the class, then instances can be Ferrari, Hyundai, Mazda. They are each unique, but they all follow the same archetype. They are all a car. Similarly, they will all share similar or identical methods. One of their methods may be accelerate or reverse. This is the basic structure of how object-oriented programming works. Since object-oriented programming, OOP, can be a somewhat lengthy topic, I urge you to revisit my later beginner tutorials if you would like to see object-oriented code in practice. Essentially, you create a class, define its methods, and then create new instances of that class, which each have their own names and properties. However, some classes cannot have instances. These are static classes. The math class we often use is static because math is a concept and does not require individual instances. It is only used for the purpose of invoking its methods. These are the three important topics I suggest you master before moving on to the intermediate tutorials following this one. If you have any questions pertaining to this video, I would invite you to tweet me at GameBinge. My name is Chris McGuire. I'll see you in my next tutorial.